This video is 1.6 Foundations in Biology, finishing up Unit 1. This is kind of a catch-all unit talking about characteristics of living things, organization of living things, and um, just some kind of basic biology concepts that we're going to look at over the course of this year, and just kind of summing them all up in basic definitions. So here we go. What are the characteristics of all things? Or I could ask you, why is a rock not alive? There's a lot of things that you could say about why a rock is not living, uh, but we're going to list eight characteristics of living things. Here we go. First one is cells. All living things are composed of cells. A cell is the basic unit of life. Uh, it's the basic unit of structure and function. It's another way that you could say that. We're going to have a whole unit on cells coming up, and so we're going to talk about that, and you don't need to label this or anything crazy like that you just need to know that all living things are composed of cells and a cell is the basic unit of life all living things reproduce all living things reproduce either sexually or asexually um, one of the misconceptions concerning these two forms is that we're oftentimes taught that sexual is two parents asexual is one parent and that is not always the case um, it is always the case that asexual reproduction is one parent and the, the idea here is that, that that individual clones itself. And so um, it's the one parent idea works okay, but just make sure that you understand that in asexual reproduction, the offspring is genetically identical to the parent. For sexual reproduction, uh, two parents is not always the case. And so um, you know, an oak tree reproduces sexually and it does not need another parent just by itself produces both male and female gametes and so sexual reproduction has to do with the production of gametes which are uh, sex cells and the offspring of sexual reproduction are genetically different offspring as opposed to genetically identical the third characteristic of all living things is all living things have a genetic code and that genetic code is DNA uh, genetic this is DNA is the genetic code found in all living things we will have an entire unit talking about DNA and all the fun things about it. Uh, fourth, all living things grow and develop. A couple differences here to make sure we understand. Growth just has to do with changing in size, right? Living things change in size over the course of their life. And development has to do with <coughs> changing, could have, you know, changing in, in you know, body shape or body pattern. Um, changing in body function as well as the organism ages and you, you, know, you see this in this picture here of the crayfish or whatever that is I'm looking at some kind of crayfish and uh, yeah and it, you can see it's developmental stages right it is not only changing in size but it also changing in body pattern and shape and I think that's important all living things obtain and use energy uh, this means that they eat and they use that energy in order to do normal function. There is a word associated with that and it's called metabolism. Metabolism is the sum of all reactions inside of an organism, whether you are breaking food down or you are building up something in your body, like making more tissue, more cells, more anything. All that is metabolism and requires an input of energy from the outside. All living things respond to stimuli. A stimulus is anything that's acting on the organism from the environment, and the organism is able to respond to that, right? This Venus flytrap, this little mealworm will crawl into the Venus flytrap, and the plant will respond by clamping down on it, right? Uh, when you hear a noise, you respond to it. A rock cannot do that because it is not living. And so all living things are able to respond to their environment in some form or fashion. All organisms or all living things maintain stable internal environments. There's a word for this. It's called homeostasis. Homeostasis is the state of an organism at its quote unquote normal levels. So you have a normal temperature of 98.6 or thereabouts. Your body is nonstop trying to keep that temperature the same. If you walk outside on a summer day, the body temperature is going to increase and your body will do things in order to decrease your temperature. Uh, this particular picture shows how the body regulates its own blood sugar levels.
by releasing hormones in order to do that. Again, homeostasis. All living things are attempting to keep a ma- and maintain a normal body levels. And then lastly, all living things as a whole change over time. This has to do with evolution. Evolution is the change in a population over time. And uh, so we're not talking about individuals here. That would be like growth and development. But we're talking about populations. And we're going to talk about what a population is in just a second. All populations change over time. And so now we're going to look at the organization of living things, how they are organized from top to bottom. We're going to start with the most complex and go down to the simplest. Um, But when I say simplest, I don't mean less complex necessarily. just mean the smallest, I guess is one way to think about it. The biosphere is the largest and most complex level of study. This is the whole Earth. Biosphere. Um, Not a whole lot to say there. Biomes. Biomes are large areas with similar climate and communities. (coughs) So like a jungle is a biome or um, a taiga or desert there's lots of examples of this desert can be really big like you know the Sahara is as big as the United States it's a particular biome and so it could be very large areas similar climate communities is the big idea here next is an ecosystem ecosystem that picture is really small ecosystems are smaller than biomes and you really ecosystem is kind of a thing that you can decide you know you can say well my backyard is an ecosystem and then you say well what is an ecosystem it's all the living and non-living factors in a particular area so if you say that my backyard is an ecosystem then you will list off all the living things and all the non-living things that can make up that ecosystem you know there's a coastline there like a beach would be an example of an ecosystem so smaller than biome ecosystems are made up of living things all the living things in an ecosystem are called a community or you could say all the living things in an area just any defined area is a community and so this is not just the things that we know we like to talk about like the birds and the polar bears and the whales and stuff but this is all the way down to the bacteria to the small things that kind of keep the whole ecosystem going the plant life everything is part of the community and so this isn't just a just an animals thing but it's plants animals bacteria fungi all the living things plants everything that make up that area is a commu- is a community and a community is made up of individual populations a population is a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area species is a particular word that we're not going to define at this time so you could say a group of similar organisms that live in the same area That would make up a population. Here's a population of narwhals that are actually a real animal. I have students discuss that with me all the time. I didn't think those were real. They are. I mean, look at them. They're having some sort of sword meeting or something right there. This uh, population is uh, usually how um, ecologists talk about animals. They will talk about a population or the health of a population. We use the word population, of course, to talk about the number of humans in a particular place. And so this is a word that we're all familiar with. And a population is made up of individual organisms. Don't need a word for an organism. Single living individual. But this individual is also organized as well. So how do we go further down? Well, an organism is made up of organ systems. These are groups of organs that perform specific functions for the whole body. Skeletal system, muscular system. We will have a whole unit dealing with human body systems. And that is made up of organs. An organ is a group of tissues that perform closely related functions. The lungs are an organ. They do respiration. The trachea there is an organ also. It has a particular function in the respiratory system. You get the idea. And organs are made up of tissues. Tissues are groups of similar cells that perform a specific function. So like skin cells or like muscle cells. You get the idea. And then of course we get the cells again. They're cells. Now cells are made up of these little bitty bits called organelles which we're going to have a whole unit about cells and organelles and all the cellular functions and all that stuff. It's a good time. But cell is the most basic unit of life. We discussed that earlier. And then, of course, molecules. Molecules are a single unit of a compound, like a a water molecule. This is a phospholipid. Um, It's just a group of atoms that perform a specific function, particularly in the biology, we'll talk about the shape of molecules and how their shape determines their function. 
spend quite a bit of time talking about that. Atoms, of course, or molecules are made up of atoms, which are the basic unit of matter. We'll talk about that at the beginning of unit two.